So as 2016 comes to a close, there are a couple of games that I've played throughout the year, even some games that I decided to go back to because since I didn't get a chance to play in the previous years, like Wolfenstein The New Order, which I highly recommend if you haven't played that game, I highly recommend you play that game because the story's good, the gameplay is good, and it is quite challenging, even on normal difficulty. Infamous Second Son, The Order 1886, I highly recommend you play those games because I actually enjoyed myself playing these games. So, game of the year, what does it come down to? Well, first, before I even get started with game of the year, I would like to give a review for just gaming in general in 2016 because as I saw, you know, from the outside looking in and inside looking out both ways, I see that now gamers are starting to become a little bit more smarter and more aware of how gaming companies are treating their consumers, i.e. us gamers. You know, with games like The Division, which didn't quite live up to the hype, and of course the failure called No Man's Sky, Mighty Number no. 9, and a couple of other games that maybe I just kind of forgot or have I have not mentioned yet because, let's just face it, if I haven't talked about it or mentioned it or if it's still not being played to this day, that, mean, that, that just tells you something, that those games really didn't live up to the hype, it didn't live up to the expectation. So... That being said, game of the year. What is my game of the year? Well, with all the games that I've played throughout this year in 2016 from January up until December, it's a lot of games for me to cover and go through. And honestly, it's going to take me a while to just figure out and find out what game exactly is my game of the year. So I'm just going to go ahead and start off with some honorable mentions and break it up into categories because I still have a shooters of the year my fighters of the year, and my RPG action-adventure games of the year. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the shooters of the year. Now, with shooters of the year, I've played the Division. I mean, not the yes, I did play the Division, The Order 1886, Overwatch, Destiny Rise of Iron, Battlefield 1, Titanfall 2, and, of course, both Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered. And also Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Now, with all these shooters that I've played, it's kind of somewhat difficult to pick, figure out and find exactly which of these shooters that I actually find Shooter of the Year. And since I've played all of them and put in at least over five to six, seven hours into each of these games... I'm going to have to give it to Titanfall 2. The reason why I'm going to give it to Titanfall 2 because pre in Titanfall 1, you know, there were a couple of things that Titanfall 1 was missing and gamers decided to let the you know, the developers Respawn Entertainment know exactly what they want out of the set another iteration of Titanfall 2, you know, what they could implement on, what they can change and what can they, you know, address. And oddly enough, they listen. Respawn Entertainment did listen to the community. They listened to their fans. And so many things have changed for Titanfall 2 that is not as the same as Titanfall 1. Granted, there is a familiarity with the game. I don't know if familiarity is a word, but I'm just going to go ahead and just use it anyway. But Titanfall 2 brought something a little bit different compared to all the other shooters. I will say that it is neck and neck between... Titanfall 2 and Overwatch, because Overwatch was really good this year as well. And then I would say Battlefield 1 would come in third place, and then, um, what else? Maybe Uncharted and Call of Duty and fourth and whatnot, and so on and so forth. But I'm going to have to give it to Titanfall 2, because they've made a lot of improvements from the first one. And even the story mode was actually good, because if you haven't played Titanfall 2's campaign mode, which I highly recommend, you should play it, because the level design in that game, in the story campaign, was really good. To the point where there were some parts in the game that was really challenging just to get around, and you're just like, wow. Out of all the shooters that I've played, I haven't played something as, you know innovative as this and I, I gotta give it to respawn entertainment granted i did not like the fact that ea decided to have this game released in between battlefield one and call of duty because really that kind of hindered the sales of titanfall 2 and it's not going to get the shine as it's supposed to because i want I, I actually wanted titanfall 2 to be delayed till march so that way it's a better 
window of opportunity so that way when people are you know burned out of battlefield one and call of duty there's titanfall 2 that they can fall back on and everyone will have a blast so i'm gonna give it the titanfall 2 next now when it comes to fighting games my fighter of the year there was street fighter 5 that i've played i would ca i would consider naruto storm 4 as a fighter but it's more of a brawler but whatever um, there was Guilty Gear, um, Exert, Revelator, there was Mortal Kombat XL, there was King of Fighters 14, Mar Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 re-released, and I believe the last fighter to come out this year was Blaze Blue Central Fiction. So with all these fighting games that came out, I haven't put much time into it, I haven't put much time into all the fighting games, but... Because I played Mortal Kombat very heavily, but if I'm going to have to give it to a fighter of the year, like who really deserves it, I'm going to have to give it to King of Fighters 14 because they came out with a story mode, they came out with all characters, and they didn't pull the BS that Capcom did with Street Fighter V by rushing it out because Capcom Pro Cup was coming up and... You had an unfinished game, and then you had to wait for updates to add other game, you know, add other modes and features into the game, which kind of really hindered the sales of Street Fighter V to the point where even Naruto Storm 4 on the PlayStation 4 outsold Street Fighter V. I know. That's crazy. It outsold it. That's nuts. All right. Moving on. Now there is my action-adventure RPG our action adventure RPG of the year. <sighs> well, I'm going to make this one an obvious one. I'm just going to go ahead and give it to Uncharted 4 because, man, I cannot believe how Naughty Dog, you know, pulled this because I was amazed and just immersed into Uncharted 4 just playing it. And the transition from cutscene to gameplay and back and forth, it was just wow like i was amazed even when you look at even when you try to play the, when you play this game at a higher refresh rate the visuals and the movement just looks so nice and i kind of wish that this game did run on 60 frames per second because that would have that would have been the icing on the cake solid icing and then of course you had the multiplayer which was actually decent and good for the time being that i played it and then i just moved on to something else but the story mode it was I loved it. I love Uncharted 4 story mode, so I'm going to give it to Uncharted 4 as my action-adventure RPG of the year. <sighs> now, final. My final award. I'm going to have to, which will be my game of the year. So out of all the games that I've played throughout this year, so many games that I've played and enjoyed and i put so much time into... It's really a tough decision on what game do I really want to have the game of the year. And honestly, <laughs> I'm going to give it to Dark Souls 3 because, man, Dark Souls 3 was really, really good this year to the point where even the DLC and the new PvP mode that they added where you can just have a free-for-all brawl with all other um, players, it was nice. It was fun and it was good. The bosses were uh, challenging. I mean, the Nameless King kicked my ass. The Twin Princess kicked my ass. The Dancer kicked my ass. Even the final boss kicked my ass. Even the one, bo the final boss in the DLC, I think Ashes of Andriel. Man, that that chick destroyed me so many times to the point where I'm like, yo, I need some assistance. I need some help because this chick is beating my ass. But Honestly, Dark Souls 3 for the win because with everything that was into the game and whatnot and just it was running nice and smooth day one, I was just into Dark Souls 3 so much and I got myself ready for this game after beating Dark Souls 2, which I had a tough challenge in because Dark Souls 2 kicked my ass a lot. But when Dark Souls 3 came out, I'm like, yo, I'm going to be ready. I know I'm going to die a lot, but you know what? I'm going to have a blast playing it. So... With that being said, what is your game of the year? And how was 2016 to you when it comes to gaming? Let me know in the comment section below. Share me your thoughts. And as always, guys, have a happy new year 
and stay classy.